Hey, 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 Ocio, Halito, peace and blessings again, everybody. It is once again your girl Shay Marie coming back to you for another video. So, um, I know my last video, you guys, we talked a lot about politics and about Donald Trump and what he's doing with the government and everything, but this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, with this video, you guys, I wanted to share um, some uh, solutions with you solutions on how you can start um, positioning yourself and um, creating your own reality and um, building your own uh, economy and uh, building your own wealth for you and your family and your and the success of your family and the freedom gaining your freedom that's most importantly what this video is about so um, I'm bringing a video to you today um, that I want to share with you from someone that I absolutely adore um, and have been um, I consider like one of my what you want to call it a uh, virtual mentors um that i've been following and, and, and paying attention to and listening to for over, for, for over the you know past like maybe five years is robert kiyosaki um robert kiyosaki um did an interview today earlier today um breaking down why um it is important that you have silver gold and bitcoin in that order so or gold silver and bitcoin however you want to order it but gold silver and bitcoin so um i'm going to play that video because um, I want to talk to you about preserving your wealth and securing your energy and, you know, how you can pretty much triple your income in a very small amount of time. So what I'm going to do is go to this video and then um, we're going to go from there. Friend, the genius, but he simplifies things. He's one of the, uh, the geniuses that simplifies the complex and the finances, so comp finances and investment. They try to make it complicated, but it's really simple. And uh, so thank you, Robert. Thank you for uh, sharing your time with us. And I appreciate uh, your time here. Well, first of all, Ash, thank you. Because how many years have we been going through hell together? Do you know what I mean? So Ash, for those who may not know, but Ash has, you know, he used to be a six foot eight, but he can make <laughs> But no, it's been really, I'm honored that you have stuck through a thick, thick and thick and thin and I still remember the first night I met you. There were these other characters, and they're as they're as funny as they come. But you shone through the whole thing. So anyway, anyway, that's the character that Ash shows. I'm honored to be on his program. Uh, thank you very much, Robert. Yeah, that was one of the first lessons I remember clearly. The lessons were. Uh, uh, you can't do a good deal with bad partners. And I'm sitting in the room of three, 400 people. I'm in the back and I was like, I think he's talking to me. I believe he's talking to me. And it was really impressive how you were able to pick that up. And uh, we've learned a lot. And uh, it's one of the things. So uh, uh, let's get into right into it, Robert. One of the things that I uh, maybe you could tell us, the people that are watching online and the people that are uh, don't know you very well. Maybe something about your childhood that uh, helped you be successful that not many people know about. Um, I suspect something from the education system or the, some of the experiences you've had as a child in the childhood. Well, uh, the story of Rich Dad Poor Dad begins when I was nine years old, and my well, in a little town called Hilo, Hawaii, which is very, very far south. It's one of the most farthest states south in America, and uh, it was a very sleepy town. And when I was nine years old, my parents moved across town. And ironically, there was two schools across, right across the street from each other, one for rich kids and one for working class kids. And due to the way the lines were drawn, not to my father, not my father didn't make monkey with it, although he could have, is our family was on the rich kids school of, side of town. So at nine years old, I go to a school with rich kids, most of them white. You know, and across the street were all the laborers' kids. So uh, the, in Hawaii was a sugar plantation town. So the the plantation workers' kids <clears throat> went to the school across the street, and the plantation owners' kids went to the school I went to. And so that's where the education began. And I raised my hand and I asked my ninth, you know, my fourth grade teacher. I said, "When are we going to learn about money?" And she sounded like a church woman. You know, she sounded like my pastor at, at Sunday school. He says, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I said, maybe evil. She didn't say it that way, but that's what she was saying. She says, we don't teach money at school. But anyway, uh, she said, well, maybe evil to you, but I want to know why these kids are rich and I'm not. And, you know, my father was a PhD and we're still poor. 
So you go, what's wrong with it? Because the Japanese, you know, the way for the Japanese to get off the plantations, because we're all immigrants, hmm. was to go to school. So that's why education, you know, formal education is crucial among the Asians. And it still is. You look at the battle going on at Harvard and Yale and Princeton and all that. Is the Asian kids kick ass on all the other kids because they're geeks. They're, they're numb. They're brain, you know, they're, they're academic types. I'm not. But anyway... So education played a big role in my family to get out off the off the plantation. But I want to know who owned the plantation. That's why I like the white kids better. I said, I'd rather own the plantation than work for the plantation. You know what I mean? So that's where it began. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an that's a interesting uh, uh, background there because right now it is exactly what we're needing uh, more better education than because of the school system don't teach us anything about money. So, and it's all around the world the same. It's, uh, uh, and uh, as an engineer, well-paid, made a lot of money, but learned very little about finances. I, I know how to do the math, but I didn't know how to manage my own finances. It's a, a, uh, and from your games, and uh, I learned more from that cash flow game than my whole education as an engineer. It's, a, it's pretty amazing. So what do you see as the... Uh, the, the right time right now for how we could improve the education system outside the education system. You know, I mean, we're doing that now with online now. So um, how do you see that uh, progression in that direction? Well, you know, this Corona crisis, which I heard Germany's doing very well with it. And, you know, Singapore did well with it. And then uh, South Korea did well with it. Mm -hmm. and, and America's just still screwed up here. But anyway, mm -hmm. So what this reveals is not so much the coronavirus, but how weak financially Americans are. Mm -hmm. You know, if 50% of Americans can't have, don't have an extra 400 bucks, and America is now the biggest debtor nation in the world. And, you know, um, millions of countries are going broke because the U.S. financed their debt in U.S. dollars. So 80% of world debt is measured in U.S. dollars. And so a country like Australia is struggling because the Aussie dollar is dropping. And they have to convert Aussie to U.S. to pay off the debt. And then in America right now, this you know the biggest mall in America is called the Mall of America. They just skipped two mortgage payments. They now owe $3 billion in mortgage payments. So this coronavirus, I think, is kind of fishy. But anyway, the real thing is the underlying pre-existing conditions is how financially poor millions of people are and all around the world. And, you know, I'm, I'm fourth generation Japanese American and those guys are still idiots. You know, they're, they're still saving money. And for the last 30 years, Japan has been in a depression. They're printing, you know, trillions of yen and they're buying ETFs and all this stuff. The same thing the Fed's trying to U.S. Fed's trying to do it right now. You know, Deutsche Bank, as you know, is, in, is toast. They don't think they're going to survive. So what's going wrong? You know, that's kind of the question. So you got to step back and say, what did school teach you about money? Nothing. And the more I, f I started, nine years old, I started asking that question, and I haven't stopped asking that question. And I'm still finding out <clears throat> why doesn't our school teach us about money, but more what is money? That's the question. And the more I found out, Ash, I'm like 73 now. I've been doing this for 60-something years, asking that question, what is money? And the more I find out about money, the more I need to take a shower. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a nasty subject. And so the best thing I can figure out, this is my guess, is the reason there's so much poverty and panic in today's world society has nothing to do with the coronavirus. It has to do with a lack of financial education in our schools. And the game is rigged for the rich. So my going to school with a bunch of rich kids who owned the plantations was actually an arbiter of the future. So I'm mm -hmm. still looking at the future, although I was only nine years old. So that's, that's the whole story. And so uh, we're in serious financial trouble. Serious. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand that. That's a, that's a good, a good opportunity now to get, get ready and educate ourselves, people. So uh, follow Robert on uh, the Rich Dad Radio Show and also uh, 
you'll see the opportunity here later on we, uh, to sign up at Be More to Give More, BMT, bmtgm.com slash RK for Robert Kiyosaki, where we'll give you some information, uh, resources, where you can get the cash flow game from Robert and where you could uh, watch the radio show. I watched also the, the latest, uh, one of the latest episodes with Richard Duncan, which is, uh, we studied uh, w with you uh, in um, London and a couple of times in, in Arizona. Uh, he's had a really interesting perspective about the dollar and what's happening there. Maybe you could elaborate on that from your discussion with him. And I recommend you guys also watch the radio show again. Yeah, you know, thank you. It's, uh, you know, Richard Duncan, I came across him by accident. This is years and years ago. I was cruising through a Borders bookstore, which is now out of business. And this book kind of whispered at me, it was called The Dollar Crisis. And that fit my whole belief system that the dollar was fake, U.S. dollar. So I read The Dollar Crisis, and then Richard Duncan and I became friends. And his background is he worked for the IMF and the World Bank. And once, like I said, the more I find out about the monetary system, he mentioned the words World Bank, IMF, I need to take showers because, you know, they sound like nice, good organizations and all this. But in my opinion, and this is my opinion, and a lot of people don't agree with it, their only thing was to steal the wealth of nations. And the mm -hmm. way they do that, you know, like let's say the IMF or the World Bank gives a loan to Brazil. They said, you want, we want you to build a hydroelectric plant in Brazil. So we're going to lend you $5 billion, let's say. But that money never leaves New York, you see. And then all the contracts are then given to U.S. corporations. And they go down there to build this dam in Brazil. And they come back. The money still hasn't left New York. <laughs> and then Brazil is on the hook to pay back. Uh, what's, what's their currency called? Real or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's Portuguese. But anyway, they're, they're supposed to pay back the fifth to five billion dollars in debt in u.s debt with their currency so the more i found out about the the system of money the more interesting it got but i said the more i needed to take a shower <laughs> and, and that's why there's no financial education in our schools because it's easier to steal from people if they don't know anything Correct. Yeah. So if you don't know how to manage your own money, give it to us and uh, the, the insurance companies and the financial planners will probably try to uh, manage it for you. Um, so um, that is why I recommend you guys get the cash flow game, play as often as you can so you can train yourself and to see a different opportunity. So you're able to expand your mind of what is possible for you. We use it all the time in our mentorship programs to uh, expand people's minds and able to Uh, lower their cycle of how fast they can get me financial free. So, uh, relative well, if, to I, if, I, if I could, you know, yes, it's sir. really not about the cash flow game. See, the board game is the board game, but this is the real game board here. It's called a financial statement. And this is what your banker asks for. You know, in 2008, when the, the subprime markets crashed, I went to my banker with Kenny McElroy, my advisor, and we borrowed $300 million dollars. The average person can't borrow $300,000, much less $300 million. Now, if I didn't have one of these, I couldn't have borrowed that much money. And today it's over half a billion. You see, the whole thing here, this is your report card. And I, I interviewed Tom Wheelwright, who's a rich dad advisor on tax-free wealth. And I asked him, I said, about 1,000 college graduates, how many of them know what a financial statement is? He said, zero. So the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and, and by the way, this is the financial statement for kids. You know, they play with tokens and all this. And most, most adults just start with this because they're not smart enough to fill in the blanks here, you know, this, this thing here. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> the key to controlling your wealth is found in the cash flow board game, but it's not on the game. It's in the financial statement. And this is what your banker will ask you for when you grow up. This is your report card. They don't care if I, went, if I went to Harvard or Yale. They don't care if I'm valedictorian. They want, us, they want my financial statement. And if you haven't got a financial statement, they won't give you any money. They shouldn't because you're not that smart, even though you may have a college degree and a straight-A student, you know. 
So the cash flow game was a breakthrough, came out in 96, to actually have fun learning about how to be an accountant, really. And that's what Tom Real right, you know, is my, my teacher on this whole thing. And he says, out of a thousand students with, from college, none know what a financial statement is. And that's why we're in serious financial trouble today, including Deutsche Bank. You know, I think Deutsche Bank the, is the most precarious bank today. But, uh, but that's because those guys don't know what money is either. So it's really a challenge. You know, the Fed is run by uh, 900 PhDs, and that's why our economy is so screwed up. That's like having 900 PhDs telling us how to manage our money. And then you have a guy like Trump, right? You know, some people love him and some people hate him. And you'll never, you're not going to convince anybody to change your mind. You know, some of you hate them right now. Some of you love them. Some of you don't give a kid. But now you'll change your mind. But the reason he doesn't show his financial statement, this thing here, he won't show it because he doesn't pay any taxes. So the more I understood money, like I said, the more I had to take a shower. Mm -hmm. And the, the more I studied money, I went, oh, my God. So I'll give you a little history. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Bank was created. The same year, 1913, the Internal Revenue Service was created. And if you can understand that, the reason they don't tell you about money is because in 1971, the U.S. dollar became debt and they could print as much as they wanted. And then taxes. So that's the system. It's always debt and taxes. So the reason Trump won't show this thing is because you would see that boy is making billions of dollars and paying nothing in taxes. Now, some people say that's criminal. I kind of, I kind of personally like it because I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can choose where how much taxes yeah, you pay. Your sounds out again. Really? Can you hear me? No, I can hear you fine. fine. Um, um, I can hear you fine, Robert. Can you hear me? Uh, so the inner circle. Yeah, you cannot hear me. Did you mute it? Did you mute it? No, me? we're not mute you. Okay, okay it's back on again. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, so the point is that uh, um, the game is not only a tool to learn about financial uh, income statements, but it's a great, great tool to experiment for yourself to see more opportunities. To experiment with that and how to deal with that and to be able to get yourself out of trouble and without losing money. And uh, one of the things I've used it for is uh, uh, how to choose your partners because how the people play the game is exactly how they are in life. If they are uh, fearful in the game, they have fear in life. If they are very greedy, they are greedy in life. And if they're trying to change the rules, like I've learned from some of the bad partners I've had, then you know you have some issues. So it's a very great tool, and uh, I'm very glad that we found it and translated it and uh, uh, use it on a regular basis. So yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, we'd like to make a, a competition. If you're interested, just register and ask your questions here, and we will maybe make a competition for uh, a cash flow game round for uh, in English or German. Very good. Um, so let's get into the, uh, the, the section of uh, entrepreneurship, Robert. Uh, entrepreneurship right now is more in demand than any other time um, because it's changing so fast. And in, in, the, in, in all of history, the entrepreneurs are the ones that solve the problems and actually be able to pivot quick enough uh, to uh, profit and to actually uh, survive. And the people that are thinking of ideas are, are, are hurting right now. Um, maybe you could explain a little bit about that, where your perspective, and I've seen your changes already, in the last time with Twitter and everything. That sounds really excellent. Well, you know, like my poor dad was an employee, school teacher. My rich dad was an entrepreneur. So I'm going to go back to age nine. When I asked my poor dad, the school teacher, I said, when are we, when are we going to learn about money? He said, well, we don't teach money at school. And I said, but your rich dad might know about it. So I said, why would he know about it? And my poor dad said, because I'm an employee and he's an entrepreneur. And, you know, entrepreneur is very high risk. So he says, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you must understand money. And the reason the failure rates for entrepreneurs is nine out of 10 is because they don't have the, they, they don't have a team. They don't understand what a financial statement is. 
and then they don't even know when they're going broke. So it's like the U.S. economy right now. America is now 120% debt to GDP. And the average American has no idea what I just said. Japan is now pushing 280% debt to GDP. You know, I don't know what your, the euro is doing, but, you know, it, if you don't understand those words, you're probably in trouble. And that's why this corona crisis is going to expose the pre-existing condition of a lack of financial education is really what it is. So. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I, I see your uh, great work you're doing um, uh, with uh, Fernando's daughter in the millennial money, and uh, we're thinking about doing something similar for the baby boomers, or really maybe call it baby boomers uh, bombs or uh, crisis for them, because uh, they have a less of a runway now. So they need to react faster, and uh, if they don't change their ways, uh, they might have gained some money, and, but they're going to lose their their money in the four hundred one k's or the retirement plans that have been designed by design uh, not for their benefit. Um, right. This is my book that came out in 2020. It's who stole my pension. And it's a very, and my co-author is an SEC attorney. He's also a whistleblower on Wall Street. So he saw how Wall Street was ripping off the pensions all over the world. So uh, it's a worldwide problem. So he says here the most, the number one export of america are toxic assets and that's what america did in 2008 that's why the subprime market nearly crashed that's why deutsche bank's still in trouble hsbc is in trouble the bank of china is in trouble it's very simply as they keep buying these toxic assets and the reason pensions are broke is because wall street was selling them these toxic assets the same as it did with iceland and turkey and greece and they, these guys who are managing our pensions are like my poor dad. They're highly educated poor people. And so that's why if you have a pension, you're in serious trouble today. So in this book here, who stole my pension, I mean, I've been interviewing people. And one of the guys in there was a UPS driver. You know, it's like a FedEx driver. And those guys are supposed to be smarter than the average truck driver. And the guy interviewed here, his pension was when he retired was $5,000 a month. They just cut them down to 900 a month wow. before the crisis. So it's getting worse. So the baby boomers with what we call in America call a 401k defined contribution pension plan, they're even worse trouble. So the old guys like me, the baby boomers <laughs> are in serious trouble. So the millennials are in trouble too, because not understanding money, millennials all 1.7 trillion in America in student loan debt. So the average millennial coming out of school is set back in life because they're handcuffed with debt. And that's because they don't teach money at school. And I'll go back to it again. In 1971, the U.S. dollar, when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, the U.S. dollar became debt. And today, you know, as we're speaking today in 2020, they're printing trillions of dollars. Because, you know, it's like, it's like the Hindenburg, the Derrick, you know, the, it's coming down. There's a, the, the tear is so big. The stock market keeps going up. But the problem is in the, it's in the shadow banking system. It's, it's like the banking system under the streets. So you see up, upstairs, you see this nice little bank. You see a little government office. And you see a financial planner's office. But under the street is a shadow banking system. And it's, going, it's bankrupt. So that's why HSBC goes to bank, Deutsche Bank goes back, the hedge funds, private equity funds, they're all banking in the, in the shadow banking system. That's where commercial paper and corporate credit is sold. So in September 2019, the shadow banking system in America, the biggest banks like Deutsche Bank went to borrow money because they were broke and the hedge funds were broke. And the shadow banking system says, we're not going to give you any more money. So they raise interest rates to the most credit worthy banks to 10%. Meanwhile, on the surface to mom and pop, they were dropping interest rates because they need mom and pop to use credit cards and borrow and buy houses and all that. But the biggest banks, hedge funds, financial organizations are going broke. That's why this crisis is so big. The dominoes have not yet started to fall. 
Yeah, very interesting, because that reminds me of one of the questions I was reading before from the group. We've got a lot of questions involved, and you can uh, continue to send your questions to uh, uh, support or actually go to here where you can ask questions, be more to give more, uh, dot com slash Robert Kiyosaki, RK, BMTGM dot com uh, slash RK, where you can ask your questions and uh, get an opportunity uh, to uh, get a strategy session if you like, uh, and how to get your finances in order and more information in a deeper way and uh, possibly play catch with us and get the word out. So uh, this question was, I, I remember reading it, is um, from Norbert. His favorite book was Fake. Uh, and his question was about, is he from Stuttgart? And he was asking about what's your um, take on uh, gold, silver, and small quantities. And um, using that as a tool for protecting as, as an insurance policy. Right? In order Right. I mean, the, uh, that poor dad, there was three rules. This book had to be, this book was turned down by every New York City publisher because it said when it came to money, I didn't know what I was talking about. But you understand most publishers and editors are people like my poor dad. They don't know what they're doing. So they turned down Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is 97. It had to be self-published uh, because I said, your house is not an asset. It isn't. Savers are losers and the rich don't work for money. It was the house and the saving money that got to them because for the average uneducated person, there may be a PhD, but saving money and owning a house is religious. My house is an asset. Now, if you can read a financial, it's a liability. It's owned by the banks. So the average educated person is an idiot. You can't cure stupidity, no problem. You know, until they say, until they admit, maybe I don't know something. So anyway, the reason I save gold, silver, and Bitcoin is because of the book Fake. I don't know where it is now, but um, we just translated it. Right yeah. here. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. Is in 1971 the U.S. dollar became fake when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So what I did in 1973 is I went on the gold standard. You know, I bought my, I was flying in Vietnam as a Marine pilot. And I had stories inside fake. And I, I went to buy gold behind enemy lines, which proves Marines aren't that smart. And the woman trying to sell me gold was smarter than I am. I, mean, I don't think she went to Harvard. You know, she had no college degree, but she knew the value of gold. And that was another wake up call for me. I went, okay, I got it, you know. So we, our aircraft carrier then sailed into Hong Kong. And I was running the streets looking to buy gold. And I didn't know this then, is that in 1972, when I was looking for gold, 73, it was illegal for Americans to own gold. I, I remember that. Was really interesting. You know, you can, the more you find out, the more you need to take a shower. <laughs> but I, I, why are they doing that, you know? So I buy a crew caravan, and I had to smuggle it into the country, into the U.S. because it was illegal. I paid about 50 bucks for that crew caravan. Today, that crew caravan is worth about $2,000 and it's not stored in America it's stored in vaults outside of America that's how much I don't trust my country smart, so yeah, smart. I, I, I've been saving gold, silver and Bitcoin because gold and silver are God's money and Bitcoin is people's money in other words it's outside the Federal Reserve and the Central Bank system because I don't trust them so if you trust them, save money <laughs> yeah, I know. We've been uh, studying silver with you for many, many years, and, and uh, right now it's so cheap. And it's a, uh, one of the things I we're not recommending to you guys specific investments. Get yourself educated, but it is uh, um, one of the things you should look at and, and have yourself ready. And this times, you know, to, to use it as a uh, as a safety net. And my God, fifteen dollars uh, right now. It's a it's a great opportunity. Yeah, silver is, silver is the biggest opportunity on the markets today because its all-time high was 49. So at 15 to 49, it's still, what, 60% below the top, whereas gold is now like 5% below the all-time top. Mm -hmm. And the stock market is coming down to printing trillions of dollars. So I, I wouldn't want to be in the stock market because the problems in the shadow banking system and gold and silver, as long as they're printing money, gold and silver get more valuable, same as Bitcoin. So we're outside the system. And that's why that's why I save, not cash, but gold, silver, Bitcoin. 
as long as they're printing money, I'll do the same. Yeah, um, and, uh, and most people don't understand what Bitcoin and crypto is. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't understand it for a long time. Now we are studying very heavily. Uh, what do you see, not only the, not from a price perspective, but as an impact from the technology and how it's going to impact our finances and our world? Well, number one is non-centralized money. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. It doesn't go to the Fed, which I don't trust them. But the most important thing, the design of Bitcoin, this, this Japanese guy apparently, Satoshi, whatever his name is, I don't know if he exists, but anyway, the way it was designed was that it got harder. So just last month and this month, they had a halving. And a halving means they cut down the number that can be created. At the same time, Bitcoin is getting cut in half. The US dollar is printing trillions of it. So... Bitcoin is getting harder and the dollar is getting softer, same as the euro, the yen, and the peso. Mm -hmm. So that's why the more I understood it, and it's, it's not controlled by any one person, it's, you know, it's blockchain technology. So it's getting harder while the dollar or fake money is getting softer. So that's why I invest in it. Now, I'm not recommending it either because there's a lot of fake coins out there. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're uh, um, one of the um, the best lessons, uh, the private lessons I had with you, Robin. I'm, I'm sharing it here because it's uh, has changed my life, and it's um, in the way of investment. It's not really that important how much you earn, but how much you keep. And then after learning how much you keep, you have to learn how to invest and protect it, like we're talking about here. And uh, but the highest level is that. How much can you afford to lose? Okay. I don't know. When you're at the level where you're able to get in cash flow, losing a million a month should not help you, should not hurt you, then you're in a different level of investment category. So you need to manage your risk accordingly. And uh, so learn about how to get cash flow investments instead of capital gains. We can do both, but cash flow investments is what keeps you going. Well, let me explain something which is hard for most people to understand, okay? You know, in fake, it's fake teachers. Most teachers are poor people. The reason I know that is my whole family is school teachers. They got the master's degrees, their PhDs, they're poor as church mice. They all want the government pension, tenure, all that stuff, you know. And so that's why I go, okay, I got that and all this. But the reason my rich dad taught me how to get rich playing Monopoly is today I understand it better, there's four kinds of intelligences. So one is mental. And if you have no financial education in your brain, you're in trouble. But you gotta have some kind of education. Two is emotional. And most people are so afraid of losing money because there, there's the emotion of fear. You know, greed and fear run most people's lives. Oh, what if I make a mistake? Oh, that's so risky and all that. They don't realize it's them that, that it's their emotions. So the, Emotional intelligence is probably the most powerful when it comes from money. And then there's physical intelligence. So like you can't learn to play golf reading a textbook or listening to a lecture. You have to do it. And the fourth intelligence is spiritual intelligence. And that's what the military taught me. The military is very spiritual words, you know, like mission, duty, honor, integrity, code, discipline. And I never heard those words in business school. But anyway, what that means is inside the brain, the brain is called neuroplastic or there's a path with neural pathways in the brain. So when you engage mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, it's like rewiring the brain. It's like, you know, boring a hole in the tunnel and all this. So when you're actually moving uh, the pieces around the game board and you're filling this thing out, your brain is changing. So it's to retrain your brain. It's called neuroplasticity or neural pathways. So if I wanted to be a golfer, I have to swing a golf club. If I don't swing the golf club, I may have all the right answers, which is most phony teachers have. I can't do a thing. And if they can't do a thing because their brain can't do a thing. So games engage all four intelligences. So that's why you pay the cash flow game. It's all four intelligences and it keeps you interested. You know, that's the best thing about it. You don't always win, you don't always lose. 
but your, your all four intelligence are engaged. So that's why I didn't like schools because it's not even a half brain event. School was all fear, the fear of failing, the fear of making mistakes, the fear of looking stupid. You know, and you, you have those fears, you make a good teacher, you make a good student. But to be rich, those are the worst things you can have. You got to overcome your emotions, fear, greed, sadness. You know, sometimes you lose. I've lost billions, not billions, I've lost millions of dollars. If I let that stop me, I'd still be broke. But I, when I lost, uh, my first big loss was $850,000. It's a lot of money, but it made me smarter. You know, the people haven't lost any money. They have all the right answers. Oh, it's so risky. It's so risky. But they're broke. That's my family. That great insight. Great insight. This is exactly why we talk about transformational financial education, because you actually change your mind and change the way you look at things. You're able to see more opportunities and take advantage of more opportunities once you play enough. And again, that's why I'm inspired. Definitely come over here to be more to give more bmtgm.com slash rk you can sign up there ask you questions when you sign up for uh, a strategy session but there we're going to have an opportunity i think we will do this uh, have you play the cash flow online if you have the game already we will uh, uh, give you some examples of win-win strategies that you could use right away and uh, any additional bonuses that we'll be talking about later uh, so the transformational information yeah robert let me say something about the cash flow online it's a waste of time because you, you, you lack the physical training. See, it's the compiling of the numbers. Look, just look at this financial statement. You know, the average guy's know, this is called income, it's called a PL. This is a balance sheet, and this is called the statement of cash flow. It's done for you automatically on the electronic version. In the board game, you have to do this. And again, again the trick is to train the neural pathways, the neuroplasticity of your brain. You're physically changing your brain. But if you don't physically train your brain, go to school, sit there and memorize all the right answers and all you walk away with, oh, what if I fail? What if I make a mistake? You know, I got to play it safe. You know, I don't want to lose money. Your brain hasn't changed. So that's why I think the electronic game, you know, a lot of people play it, but I think it's a waste of time because the hardest part, the numbers, the cash flowing. Again, this is called the statement of cash flow right here. Three. That's what changes your brain. That's what changes you. It's physical learning. And right. academics are mental learning and cowards. Fear. I am glad you mentioned that, Robert, because exactly that's how we do it, actually. We don't use the online game. We have people buy the game and they play from home. If at this time, they can play it physically, but they actually use the board and they're talking to us in Zoom and they're filling it out. They are actually doing the work so they can train, make those uh, synapses changes. And we, we've even yeah. created something that, that helps them uh, compare the results to each other. Yeah, when Robert. you're filling in the numbers, you're physically teaching cash flow. It's cash flow. Look, just today, the Mall of America missed two $1.2 billion mortgage payments. That means the cash is not flowing in, but the cash is still flowing out. And financial IQ means, can you solve this problem? You know, how, can you change the direction of your cash flow? The average person cannot change the direction of a cash flow because they went to school. They learned not to make mistakes. They didn't learn anything about financials, you know? And that's why we're in trouble. And they take, they're educated by guys like this guy, Jerome Powell of the Fed. Guy's a PhD. They're all PhDs, poor, helpless, desperate. You know, they're all school teachers who want tenure, job security. I don't trust them. Yeah, especially at this time of the, uh, of the situation where you, you're trying to work for money right now. Uh, and you're exchanging your time for money, you don't pivot and be able to create your assets in your head and create uh, money out of out of nothing. You you are in a, in a very desperate situation. That's why entrepreneurs entrepreneurship is very important right now. So, uh, great comments, Robert. Uh, uh, well, one more thing is that if you want to find out your future, look at your five friends. You know, most people hang out with losers. 
you know, I still have my classmates from Hawaii. We love them to death. We all grew up together. But they're fucking losers. You know, they, they make a lot of money because they grow marijuana. They're, they're drug dealers. You know, tropical agriculture, we called it. They're still broke because they take that money and they buy cars and boats and they have no wealth. So listen to this. Everybody's trying to get rich. And the word rich is measured in dollars. So let's say a million dollars. But this is what I tweeted at the real Kiyosaki. Wealth is measured in time. So rich is measured in dollars. Wealth is measured in time. So let's say I make a million dollars. But my burn rate, you know, due to my expenses over here, let's say it's 100000 a month. So I make a million dollars. My, my burn rate's 100000 a month. That means my wealth is 10 months. And that's why the dominoes have not yet started to fall in this corona crisis thing is because only people cannot stop that cash flowing out. They have nothing coming in. And a financial IQ means you can reverse the cash flowing out and reverse it to have it coming in. It's going out, but not coming in. Not very intelligent. Uh, uh, very good, yeah. And uh, uh, financial IQ is also being financially intelligent. And that's one of the things that I learned from you through Bucky. Maybe you could get into a little bit of Bucky. Uh, um, unity is plural. And the idea of having to be able to see both sides of the story. Because if you can't figure out your way out and you have some blockage, either you need a coach, you need a mentor, you need a group of people to help you that are working together, or be able to... Uh, question your own assumptions. If, you, if you're not questioning your assumptions, you're not going to stay in the same lane. So uh, I studied Bucky also with you, Robert. Maybe you could mention how, how that helped you uh, see both sides of the story. Well, Bucky Fuller was considered the world's friendly genius, you know, and he he's best known for the geodesic dome. So when I was 20 years old, I hitchhiked from New York City to Montreal, Canada, Expo 67, the world's fear in the future, world's fear in the future. The reason I did that was Bucky's dome was a U.S. pavilion. And I walked in that dome, you look it up on uh, Google, wherever you look it up. It's called Buckminster Fuller Geodesic Dome World's Fair 67, Expo 67. You see pictures of that dome, you should have seen it in real life. It's breathtaking. It changed my whole life. So I had the honor of studying with him I didn't meet him in 67, but I first studied with him in 81, and that changed my life too. And uh, he was the one that explained the difference between rich and wealthy. And he says, most people are trying to get rich, but they're not wealthy because they can't survive. Number of days. So when I shifted from trying to get rich and I shifted to being wealthy, I got rich. <laughs> So I never have to worry about money because I have more money coming in. I have more money in storage. Um, I have gold, silver, Bitcoin that keeps going up as the Fed and the, Euro, the European Central Bank keeps printing. And these people are still saving. You can't cure stupid because their neural pathways in the brains, they automatically go to saving dollars or euros or yen. But until you change the brain cells, you don't change the person. So that's where the cash flow game was designed to change the neural pathways in your brain. Then you can change your life. And don't just play it once. You're going to play it once. You're kidding me. I play that game every single day of my life. And you know, I got up this morning. I'm limited to how many Bitcoin I can buy. So I took the maximum. And then I maxed out on gold because my, my gold guy is out of money. I mean, out of gold. So I had to go trace more gold down. So I don't need money because I have wealth. I have lots of money. And so I save gold and silver, God's money, and Bitcoin, people's money. I don't trust the central bank system. If you do, save money. Uh, uh, thank you for that, Robert. We will be adding that resource in the resource section. Go here, please, to be more to give more dot com slash RK uh, BMTGM 
dot com slash Aki for Robert Kiyosaki. We'll add those additional resources. We'll give you a link to uh, Buckminster Fuller and uh, have the opportunity where you can play the real cash flow game with your own from home. And also, um, if we uh, get approval from uh, Rich Dad, you get the also. Okay, okay, we're back. We're back. Thank you guys for sticking around. If you stuck around this far, then that means that you got a lot of information, you guys. I really appreciated that interview that Robert Kiyosaki took the time out to do um, to really, really inform the people about what is going on in the world of finances, what is going on in our economy. Um, this is a, a, a huge global thing that's going on. I'm sorry about that. This is a huge thing that's going on. And um, we need to be knowledgeable about these things. Finan financial literacy and money is, uh, financial literacy about money is strongly lacking in our community. And we're being controlled because of our continuous use of their fake money, of the government's fake money and everything. So um, I'm not going to hold you longer. I'm going to continue this um, this conversation on a part two of this video because I want to go through some things with you. I want to talk about some things about how you can um, take advantage of amazing opportunities right now that will allow you to acquire some silver, gold, and Bitcoin. You can start earning free silver and gold, getting paid in free silver, and, I mean, getting paid in gold and silver and Bitcoin, you guys. There are some amazing opportunities that are available for you to leverage. So in part two of this segment, um, I'm going to be talking about that. So, um, stick around or make sure you check out my part two of that video. Um, I just wanted to, uh, thank you again for listening and taking the time to hear the information that I'm bringing to you. Um, I just want my people to be knowledgeable. I just want you guys to be knowledgeable about what is going on and how you can better your life, how you can, um, you know, take steps to, um, prevent certain things from happening to you when crisis happen. And so, uh, with that being said, I'm not going to hold you longer. It's your girl, Shay Marie. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure to follow me and uh, friend me as a Facebook friend. Thank you, you guys. I love you. And I'll see you on the next video.